What's up, my good vibe DJ tribe, and welcome to another episode of the DJ Spotlight here on Distracting News TV. From coast to coast, festival to nightclub, this next artist started from humble beginnings in a small town, Napanee in Ontario. Now residing in the big city of Calgary, she has found herself over the years curating events, headlining shows, and holding down residencies from Cathedral. Cathedral Free House in Saskatoon, Hookah Lounge in Regina, and now onto her latest projects, Twisted Element, Every Other Saturday, and Blush Productions. Today, we are sitting down with Miss Blizz, also known as Liana, to talk to her about her journey, struggles, drive, and progress. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> of course. So, Take us on a journey. We would love to hear about your story, your start in the industry, um, and I know you've moved a couple of times. So yeah, how did things fall into place for you? Um, I guess, so it all did start in Napanee, Ontario, which is where Avril Lavigne is from. So if you know her, which everyone does, that's what I always say. Um, it actually was like 20 minutes outside of Napanee called Kingston, which most people know is where Queen's University is. Um, so how I got into it really was my sister's husband, who was boyfriend at the time, um, was a DJ. And uh, he had a very large group of friends who were also DJs. So I was kind of around that from probably the age of 15 or 16, um, going to a lot of their events, listening to house music, learning about house music. Um, so my brother-in-law, Jay, was teaching me a lot about house music just because I was so interested in it. And um, started taking a lot of trips to Toronto, um, to the government, which is now closed, but that place was awesome <laughs> back in the day. Um, and just, yeah, getting to know what DJing is, I guess, and what house music is. Um, so like they had CDJs and vinyl. So he kind of, you know, Jay showed me a little bit, okay, this is how you mix a song. So I kind of start experimenting with beat matching and just really doing it for fun. We used to have these crazy after parties where I pretty much invited the whole bar. <laughs> I would like run around and be like, hey, party up, blah, 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 blah. And, they, and my sister and her husband were always like, oh my God, here's all the random people that Leanna invited. Um, <laughs> so I kind of left it for a while just because, um, I mean, if you guys follow me on Instagram, most people know that I've had problems with some serious health conditions. So my early twenties was a lot of me being really sick and having problems with addiction. Finally, when I moved to Saskatchewan, um, I went back to university. I had a little bit more money, just a little bit more stable, a little bit more healthy. I decided to purchase my own equipment. Um, there was a couple guys in Regina, Cody and Mason. Um, they kind of showed me a little bit about Serato cause I didn't know anything about it. Um, I didn't even know that there was technology like this now that you could use to DJ. So when I found that, I was like, this is really awesome. I was able to get started. I, we were practicing in a girl in Cody's garage and then four days later I was playing at Q. So we started this Tuesday night at Q, which is a gay bar in Regina. Um, I did that for about a year and a half and I did that completely no charge. Um, just to kind of get my name out there and to practice. Like I honestly had no idea what was going to happen when I started DJing. Like it just, I was like, I'm going to do it for fun. Honestly, from there, it just picked up. Like I kept, I was getting gigs for special events, for festivals, for pride, for, and then I got a couple of residencies. So as soon as I put myself out there, it just kind of happened for me. Um, so that's, yeah, that's pretty much my journey and how I got started. I love that you just put yourself out there because sometimes people don't, they're too scared. They want to make a plan. <laughs> yeah. Bam jam, bam jam. Uh, yeah. They want to make a plan. They want to like, Oh, I, I need my DJ to be perfect. I need it to be like this. I need like all these, all my ducks in a row, but you just went for it. And from exactly. that came so much goodness. I love that. Yeah. I'm, 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 with that. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say like a lot of people focus on like, oh my God, I have to buy all this equipment. I have to do this. I have to do that. But like, and I always tell people in business too, like just start small and then you'll grow. So yeah. Just start. Yes. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think people need to know or understand when it comes to starting off fresh in a new city or scene? Can they get back into the game when they're 
like how can they get back into the game when their brand's thinking new? And I know you've had experience doing this more than once. Yeah. Yeah, I'm known to move around a lot. <laughs> um, I've lived all over Canada, actually. Um, but it's really hard when you move to a new city in general because it's hard to make new friends, especially as an adult. I'm almost 30 now, so it's not like I can just go to school and make friends. <laughs> um, I would say every city is different, and it, it's the way that you integrate yourself is going to be different. Like Saskatchewan, for me, people there are so uber-friendly and they're just accepting. Um, it's really easy to work together. I, I found a, a, group, a good core group of people there. Um, but in Calgary, I found it, it's a little bit more clicky. Um, they're not as accepting because there's more DJs and more people, more competition. So it was a little bit harder here, but my advice to people always is to do your own thing, really. Um, it's hard to get into those clicks, and um, sometimes you don't want to be a part of those. You need to be your own person. And starting your own events, like find a niche market or something where there is a demand for a type of event, start that, be your own host, have DJs come, bring DJs from out of city or from out of town, uh, work with those DJs, and then you make partnerships, right? Then you can go play at their events. Um, and also my advice would be to not focus so much on the city that you live in. You can DJ anywhere, all over the world. It's not just about your local community. You could be a big DJ and DJ all over the world and live in like Saskatoon or, you know, live in small town Napanee. It doesn't matter. It's the way that you present yourself and the way that you get yourself out there. Um, and, you know, you could do that by being professional and making connections and really give, give and take um, with the community. And I think you eventually will kind of find your place, but don't get too stuck in your community and, and trying to be friends with everybody. And it just, it doesn't work. I love that you mentioned that as well. Like think about the big picture. Don't get so stuck in your own local town. Cause I know I found for me, the more I tried to look at the bigger picture, the more interest I kind of even pulled in within my own community. Cause they're like, Oh wait, what is she doing? What's going on over here? I'm going to yeah. know more about this project. So what some people might not know about you is that you have a history in dance. Mm -hmm. Where's my question? Uh, can, can you tell us how that's influenced you as a DJ? Yeah, it's, um, it, is, it actually influenced me a lot. Um, so I have been a competitive dancer since I was really young. I started um, in Napanee and I danced for almost till I was about the age of 22. And I started teaching when I was about 15. So I was pretty much at the dance studio every single day. That's what I wanted to do as a career. I wanted to be a professional dancer. Unfortunately, I had some injuries and my parents told me that I would starve on a couch. <laughs> so I decided to go more of the practical route. But anyways, um, it's influenced me because it's made me into a performer. Um, as much as I am a DJ, I'm also a performer. For those of you who have seen me play, I whip my head around I dance I twerk I do things that I feel um you know is a little bit of a dance background but also just me being a performer and it's also influenced the music that I play too um I guess I listen to music a little bit differently because I'm coming at it from a more creative dance perspective than somebody else who hasn't had that experience um and from like I did all kinds of dance jazz modern tap lyrical, ballet, acro, literally hip hop, everything. So I got to be exposed from a very young age to so much different types of music. Um, and also, this is a random fact, but my mom, my parents used to be DJs. So <laughs> that also helped me um, be really exposed to music. So I guess with the mix of that, like you'll hear influences in my sets from all different varieties of music while trying to stay with my style and, and genres. Uh, <laughs> you mentioned a few things that really stood out to me and uh, what some people don't know about me is that I thought I was going to be like a dancer on electric circus. <laughs> like I thought <laughs> that awesome. was career goals. And uh, yeah, you. I like what you said about like coming from it like as a performer like what's gonna get me out on the dance floor dancing yeah playing that kind of music I I definitely see a lot of DJs that love to dance have some of the 
best DJ sets. And I think <laughs> because they have that, that passion. Yeah, exactly. Get. Well, and like, if you're having fun, then everybody else is going to have fun. Right. And I do notice that when I'm dancing and having fun and feeling the music, everybody else is having a great time. It doesn't even matter what music I'm playing. Absolutely. So speaking of playing at the club, um, you've held down this amazing residency uh, for quite some time. What do you think it takes to keep these events regularly thriving? And what does that look like for you? Well, it's a lot of work. (laughs) Um, So I started Blush Productions. We're going to go on our five-year anniversary coming up next year. Um, And I started it because like all across North America, queer parties have been popping up because a lot of gay bars have been closing. So it's to make safe spaces and basically to take over a place and make it queer for the night. Um, So I started doing that in Saskatchewan and Saskatoon and Regina. Um, And it actually was very successful from the moment I started it. So I was lucky that way, but I did put a lot of effort into it, a lot of marketing, a lot of getting out there and saying, hey, I have a new event, here we go, come. And it's consistency. So it's a matter of, you know, keeping it, even when the times, like there's so many times I just wanted to give up and be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Why am I doing this? But then I remember why I'm doing it. It's for community. It's for me. It's for other queer artists to get out there and play. And as long as you're consistent with it and you're new and fresh, like you've got to change things up. You can't just do the same thing all the time. Um, and one big thing that I like with event planning it is it's not about you. It's about everybody else. So it's about the people that are coming to your event, not about you. And I feel like a lot of people focus on themselves. Well, this is my event. This is my music. This is what I do. But if you want your event to prosper and be successful, you have to give the customers what they want. Um, And that's what we do with Blush. And our music is really, um, it's, it's a little bit commercial, a little bit underground, but it's geared towards the community and what they like. And I think if you kind of have that mindset and you're really focused on building a community, you can make your events prosper in in any city. Um, You know, we get a really good turnout in Regina with a small population. We're going to be starting them here in uh, the new year, in 2019. We're hoping to get a bigger community here just because there's more people. But I think at the end of the day, just consistency and determination too, (laughs) Um, you know, because you have to get through those hard parts. Being an entrepreneur, you can really, really get down on yourself and, you know, you forget why you're doing it. I, I love that you are so involved in your community and, you know, checking in on them. You know, is this what you guys want? And like you said, having that open mind, it sounds like while there might be you know, some of the commercial side along with the electronica, it's this nice jive of what's going on while still staying true to, I'm sure, music that you really dig. What I find is nowadays, well, probably for quite some time now, DJs wear a lot of, a lot of hats, you know, you're the yeah. promoter, you're branding the events, you're selling the tickets. How do you think artists can stay relevant? What could they be doing? Well, obviously social media is a big one, Uh, but yeah, putting yourself out there and continuously marketing yourself. I mean, I guess it depends on what kind of DJ you want to be. Like if you just want to play some community events here and there, then just be part of the community. But if you really want to grow and play in other cities and stuff, you have to put yourself out there, whether or not it's on social media or, you know, making connections with people is really important. And maybe that first time that you travel and do a gig, you don't make as much money or something, but the next time you make more. So networking is really important. Um, having a good social media following, putting a podcast out there, you know, like that you're doing or music podcasts. Um, for a long time, I did a podcast once, once a month called Schools in Session, which was really good just to keep getting my style out there, which I haven't had time to do lately. But just doing things like that, um, there's, there's honestly so many things that you can do with social media, you know, Uh, putting your sets out on YouTube and then linking your account to your Facebook and to your Instagram and um, doing Instagram stories. I think social media is obviously one of the best ways, especially Instagram. Um, And then, you know, a huge thing is, is your, I guess, transformation as an artist and as a DJ, you, you don't always need to stay the same. You do need to know what the trends are. You need to need to know what's 
going on in your city, but also globally and in your, like in your country. So what are the music trends right now? What, even though you may not play top 40, what is the vibe on top 40? Cause a lot of the times, you know, in Canada, North America, house music is not huge. It's not big like it is in Europe. So if you're playing house music, you really do have to draw those people in somehow. So paying attention to trends, what's popular, what's up and coming and including those into your set and allowing yourself to grow. Like when I first started, I just played only house music and that was it because that's all I knew. Now I do play other genres because I noticed that I can play to other people and still be happy and still play music that I like and I can draw people in that way. So I would say don't say stagnant in your music progression and your style and allow yourself to just be who you want to be, even if it's not what you started out as. Yeah, I'd still be playing drum and bass. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm all in the house in tech now. Uh, I love uh, I love what you're saying here. Um, I love that you mentioned like the importance of Instagram stories. Yeah. Because I got to say... Like so many of us, we want our, our feeds to look pretty and make sense, but people yeah. want to know about the behind the scenes and they only have they so do. much time to watch it. And like, I follow Hannah Wants and Flava D and B Traits and I'm constantly like, oh my God, they have a new story. Of <laughs> and it's not it's always different. about them promoting the music. It's just no. like, check out this hilarious thing my girlfriend did or something. I'm just exactly. like, uh. It's about growing your personal brand, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Are there any last thoughts, comments, maybe upcoming events or releases you want people to know about before we end off this interview? I guess, yeah, like the two big, really two big things really are um, the Blush Productions event. So that's all queer related. So everybody under the umbrella we're having our first one in February 2019. And then we're also starting a event called Kisser, which is um, all girl bar girl party. And that's going to be in January. Um, and then for me personally, I'm still DJing at Twisted and I'm kind of around have a night in Kananaskis as well. Um, playing a different around the city, you can just follow me on Instagram and Facebook to see all that. But one thing that I've been literally working on for like two years is production. Something that takes so much time. I just like, because I am so busy with DJing and, and my business related things, um, it's always been put to the background and I've taken some courses and stuff. So, but that's something that in the new year I really want to focus on. And before I was so like worried about what I was producing, but because I just, I was so entrapped by like the house culture you get in you're like, you can't do anything else but house music. So I'm trying to allow myself to just produce what I like and what comes out. And that's really fun music. So that's something that I'm working on as well. So hopefully in the new year I can have um, something out because that would be awesome. Yeah. Collaborations. Yeah. Yeah. Let's collaborate. Yes. <laughs> We are going to make sure to leave all your links below in the description for people to check you out. For the rest of y'all that have been tuned into this wicked interview, what is something that she said that really stood out to you? Let us know in the comments below. Let us know what's resonating with you. And as always, don't let no one kill your vibe. <laughs>